Hey, so welcome again um, to the AWS Serverless Community Day. My name is Peter Hansens. I'm going to be talking about automating Slack signups with the CDK. Almost, there was a bit of a issue with a paywall in front of an API method, but uh, got a pretty good workaround in the end anyway. So cool, a bit about me. Um, I run meetups. You probably recognize me from the Sydney serverless meetup. I also run the Sydney data engineering meetup. Started that probably about three years ago. And now we've got meetups in Melbourne and Brisbane. I've also got a Slack group for the data engineers meetup. Uh, it's been really good uh, since, you know, COVID-19 has happened and stuff to keep everyone in touch with each other. And we're, not, we're doing all online events now, so it's great to be able to sort of chat that way and ask each other questions and support each other through, I guess, the social isolation. It's very popular. There's about 350 to 400 members, so adding people in is, is a bit of a task. So I thought, yep, time to get that automated. So just to go through a little bit of my process requirements, obviously it needs to capture your email because that's how you add people to Slack. But I wanted to get an agreement that people would adhere to the code of conduct. Basically, we want to be open to all members in a safe zone. Uh, it'd also be great to capture some information about attendees, like what technology they use, what things they're interested in, that sort of stuff. So um, a bit beyond the standard. So invariably, when you do this sort of, uh, when you've got a set of requirements, you invariably ask yourself, well, should we buy or should we build? And, you know, invariably buy wins out in the serverless space because any line of code requires ops and monitoring and things like that. And so it can be very expensive to maintain. Uh, you know, it's not just literally about writing the code. So in Community Invite is a great little app to do that. It's a freemium SaaS app, has a nice, uh, simple custom landing page builder. The drawback is it captures the emails only. It's $5 a month if you want to ask questions. And that was a bit steep for me considering like I, I basically, you know, pay for the upkeep costs of running the meetups and stuff like that. So um, I, I went towards the custom serverless solution. So benefits are cost is minimal. I'll have to code it up myself though. Um, it, re it will require monitoring and ops there's full flexibility. The only limit is my imagination. I can ask custom questions, which is great. I uh, can capture whether they agree with the code of conduct or not, um, and can also add additional workflows onto the process, such as, you know, welcome email or something. So just to get the MVP up and running and, you know, get people signing up in a, I guess, a, a straightforward manner, I created a Google Forms and just manually added respondees to Slack. My initial thought was to add a Lambda in the middle, but it would require me to add a, uh, security keys uh, to you know Google Forms or Google Sheets where the macro is. So um, that probably wasn't the best. So of course I needed an API gateway in front of it, but I also wanted to add MailChimp into the mix to send that uh, welcome email. So I added a couple of extra Lambda functions. Now, a lot of people have this argument of whether how small to make your Lambda functions, whether those Lambda functions should be methods or a bit bigger than uh, methods. So yeah, uh, but this is just, I, I felt it was nice and neat to do it this way. And I wanted to store say the data somewhere. So I threw a DynamoDB table into the mix so that I could query the data later and perhaps build a data pipeline at the end. And then the entry point I replaced with a step function uh, just for better orchestration and traceability. So my deployment options were obviously the serverless framework, which everyone's heard of, SAM templates, again, CloudFormation's another one. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of Terraformers for life in the crowd. Pulumi is a new entrant, but the AWS CDK uh, really stood out to me as a way of getting this up and running. So um, a couple of quick facts, uh, you can define resources in a programming language that you're familiar with. So I chose Python. Uh, you can use logic, if statements and for loops, object-oriented techniques. You can organize your projects into modules, share and reuse common elements. Uh, you know, there's testing infrastructure there and also code completion with an IDE, which is, let's face it, super handy. 
Um, also, uh, CDK outputs CloudFormation without the freaking in- indentation errors. So that's super, super handy. So basically, I wanted to just take you through my workflow of integrating a few different services. There's a few different moving parts. So obviously, I had to create a Google Forms um, and then add a G Sheets for all the entries um, and then a little script on the G Sheets uh, to call the API gateway. Um, on the Slack side of things, I needed to um, create an app and a webhook and add that webhook URL to Secrets Manager. On the MailChimp side of things, I needed to get the audience ID and API key and add it to Secrets Manager and then also create an email and automation workflow. Uh, on Secrets Manager, just needed to capture the, uh, the name of it so that I could add that to the CDK code. Um, fun fact about CDK, if you want to import um, libraries like pip packages and things like that into it, you're going to need to create a Lambda layer and reference that in the CDK code. So that's a good one to know. So with that in mind, I'm just going to dive into the demo and, and walk you through my workflow. Awesome. So taking you through now uh, the demo. So effectively what we've got here is a Google Sheets, so uh, automating Slack signups. So you've got capturing your email address, first name, last name, have you agreed with the code of conduct? Uh, and you know the only option is yes if you want to sign up uh, and uh, what topics you like so serverless starter engineering or both etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's all of that and then you have to click on the responses tab I've already had a few tests there and click on view responses in in sheets now if this is the first time you're doing it it'll ask you whether you want to create a G sheets and of course, um, you know, that's what you need to do. And so it stores all of your data um, here, line by line, all of the form entries. And it's also got the header row with all the field names there. So if you click on tools and then script editor, um, it's there's this little bit of code here. I got this from Mark Guerra uh, in his Google Forms to Slack repo. Um, so you need to enter your Slack incoming webhook URL. I've re- exchanged that for an API gateway endpoint. So you need to fill that one in and then you've got it like a Slack channel. So I've created a Slack channel in my Slack group called automated Slack signups. I've, I've made it private. Uh, so it's just for me. Um, when you first um, set up this script and copy this code in, you'll need to hit initialize in order to uh, get all the permissions uh, to access so that this script can um, access G sheets and, 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 and post the, the payload to the API. If you go all the, all the way down the bottom, what this script is all doing is it's just literally um, getting all the co- column names and just um, doing a bunch of formatting, um, you know, into JSON objects, uh, you know, column names, values and things like that. And, um, you know, packaging up the payload um, in order to to post it to this particular webhook URL. So that's pretty much what that code does. Now, if we go on to the Slack side of things, um, I mentioned that um, I wasn't able to completely automate this. And this is the reason for it is because uh, the admin users invite method um, is is only for enterprise grid customers and that obviously costs a bomb. So I didn't want to go down that path. So instead I just um, posting uh, the email addresses to a um, Slack channel and then and then I would just pick them up from there and, and then add them in manually then, um, which it invariably saves me a little bit of time. So that's, that's really good. So here's the um, Slack um, app uh, page you need to create an app and then uh, click down here on incoming webhooks and then um, activate uh, incoming webhooks. So turn that one on and then copy your, your webhook URL and, and uh, you know, post the payload there. So we're going to need to copy this and uh, bring it across the secrets manager. So I will obviously uh, clear out all of these API keys and, and, and recreate them. So, not leaking any keys or uh, don't need to worry about any of that. 
But um, yeah, so need to add the Slack webhook URL. Then I need to go to um, MailChimp, add the audience ID, API key and, and user. So hopping across there to MailChimp, I'm, I'm in the Cloud Shuttle section and you can see I've got um, an API key here. So I need to copy that across and bring it across the Secrets Manager. Also, if I click on Audience and then go to Settings, then I can find my um, audience ID there. And then of course I can hop across to MailChimp and then um, create a nice welcome email here and and all the audience members will will receive that. So that's that workflow. Cool, so I've updated my um, API gateway URL here. So I've got that entered. Um, and now basically I wanted to test out my um, Google Forms, so I'm gonna click on preview so I can see it. I'm gonna put in my test email, test plus uh, Peter at plus test123 at cloudshuttle.com.au. Peter H, uh, I will put both. Definitely like both serverless and data engineering. So cool, I'll submit that. Hopefully that goes through. So I just got a Slack message and it's come through. Peter plus test at one, two, three. Cloud shuttle, Peter H to my automated Slack signups on data engineering. So I can grab that email and click on down in invite people and invite Peter along. Um, so that's kind of where the automation's up to. So, but you know, not pretty reasonable to be fair. It saves me a bunch of time. Now I can, uh, go ahead and, um, into, uh, the step function to take a look. I'll click refresh on that one, go down here and see that, um, add to Slack's worked, uh, add to Ch MailChimp's worked and add to DynamoDB. So I'll just basically check a few things. So I'll go to my Gmail and just, yeah, so at my email, I've got uh, this email that's come through. Hi, Peter, very excited to have you here. A reminder, you can find our code of conduct here and our Slack group here. See you at the next meetup, Peter. That's awesome. I've sent myself an awesome email. Um, and if I go across to DynamoDB and refresh, then the payload of uh, my email, first name, last name, and timestamps um, all arrived there as well. So, yes, awesome. So, thank you so much uh, for listening to me. My name's Peter Hansons. You can follow me on uh, Twitter at Pete Hansons or check out my personal blog, petehansons.com.au or cloudshuttle.com.au for my company that I'm building out. So, thank you so much and um, any questions?